Have you ever wondered what happens when you've got a compressor that failed, it's time to go exchange it for the, or you maybe you gotta take the core back, or maybe the core you're getting is a remanufactured core. Well, today, we're at a compressor shop. This is Compressor Solutions Group here in Houston. I'm gonna take you through the basic process on a screw compressor and what they do to go through and refurbish that compressor to get it ready to come back to you as a remanufactured core here in the field. So the first part of this process is pretty straightforward. You drop the old compressors off, or somebody will, maybe it's a supply house, and it's just gonna get stacked here in inventory, it's gonna get coded, serial, they're gonna have a log of exactly what they need. From there, they're gonna create a schedule based off of orders and what's needed to cycle over here to the teardown table. Obviously, teardown's pretty straightforward. Guy takes the compressor, takes it apart, he preps it piece by piece, he gets the whole body disassembled so that it can then get moved over to the oven to be baked so that it can go into a staging area. So once the compressor is baked, it's going to get a lot of the oils, any moisture, that kind of stuff out of it, not completely, not 100%, but enough so that they can then stack it here on some pallets for, for continuous staging. Now, it's not ready for the actual rebuild process yet. There's still more to do. That's when, when they're actually ready to start putting the compressor back together, it's gonna land over here into the sand blaster and even a cleaning vat with some solution. So this god awful monstrosity behind me is the sand blaster, basically. They've got little bitty tiny pellets in there that they're cycling through the compressor body and trying to get any trash, any particulates, anything that's in there out of it. And then from there, it goes, lands in a soap vat where they submerge it and soak it. And that helps get the remainder of any oils and all the stuff that gets trapped in all the little pores out of it so that it's a completely clean body and it's ready to move over into the remanufacturing process. Now you would think, okay, the compressor has been cleaned. It's fully spiked up. It's ready to go. Actually, no, not even close. We still have to remachine the body to make any repairs on it. For example, these York screw compressors are terrible about the crankcase heater breaking off inside of them. I personally know. I've had severe issues with it. It's a pain in the butt to fix in the field. In addition to that, sometimes the physical bolts snap off into the foot of the compressor. So this is a place where whether it be remachining the shafts, cleaning up the compressor bodies, it's getting all the final touches done so that when it goes to the remanufacturer's side of it and they can reassemble the whole thing, it's about true reassembly. There's no more body work that needs done to that machine. It's a lot more quiet in here. Now we move into the clean area, which is where the compressors actually get put back together. This is where all the rotor shafts, the stators, everything, the bodies, everything that has work needed to it has been done, has been staged. They've got a parts area that everything that they need for that specific rebuild gets put together in a box. They can come in here, they can reassemble the bearings, all the stuff happens here. So this is where the final product of the compressor is gonna be put together to get ready to come back to you in the field. Now, this is also where they may do some batch run testing where they can take the rebuilt body, hook it up to a test machine, and make sure that it's gonna meet capacity and all the functions it's supposed to have before it gets to you. Now, one of the more critical and sensitive parts of this entire process is the actual stator itself getting it rewound, making sure everything's clean on the copper because, well, motors don't tend to run very well when they've got nicks or burns or anything else is going on with them. So this is where they can have a actual motor rebuild room where this is where the stators themselves, where they've been tested, where they've been reassembled, where they can come and get a dip and bake. Say they need to just, they don't need a full rewinding. They just need to be refurbished, if you will, or say there's an actual burnout. So say you flooded the compressor and you didn't control your superheat in the process and now you blow the thing up, well, he can come in and put a whole new set of wires in there, take it in there, dip it, bake it, stick it in that compressor body that's getting rebuilt over in the other room so that you now have a new machine at your disposal. One of the big things I want you to walk away with when you're starting to do compressors like this, there's a couple of things. One, a lot of these machines are rebuildable. You don't have to replace. It's not like a scroll where it's a hermetic sealed machine that can't have really much of anything done to it. You start to work in this heavier side, it's semi-hermetic, it's meant to be repaired and worked on, and it's, there's a lot of things we can do in the field. So I want to make sure you challenge the thought process of being just a replacement first mentality. I know there's quite a few people that struggle with that. 
I've tried to show a lot of that content here on this channel and just helping you see that we can fix this stuff. You don't have to replace it. Not even if it's an internal piece like the slides or something of that nature. You can open these up in the field. You can work on them. At the same time, there's really good companies like CSG here in Houston that can help support you when you need it. They have really good tech support on hand and they can also give you the compressors you need or even say, just say the parts themselves. If you have to have the parts, connect with them, talk to them, get to know them. I hope you enjoy this. Please consider the fact that when you have to do compressors, they almost never just die. I, and, and honestly, it still shocks me that so many systems get diagnosed that way. And it's, that's not, we're not looking deep enough. We need to figure out what were the conditions that led to that compressor failure. Yes, it's not, I'm not saying that compressors don't just somehow, sometimes have defects. It absolutely happens. Everything has that place. But it's, it's honestly very, very rare that that happens. I've had it happen. I've had it happen recently, but it's rare. You know, in, in terms of the grand scheme of how many compressors fail at a time. And the most common issues I see comes down to either charge or the superheat that we run through it. Uh, those are the two most common things, or lack of superheat, that ends up leading to a catastrophic failure. So pay attention to that. When you do a compressor, verify why you're having to do it. It's gonna really help save you and the customer long term. And it's not a skill that every technician builds. So if you're looking for a niche way of improving your personal skills to bring value to the company, that's a great way you can do it for yourself. With that, I wanna close it here. MTT, make the time for your families, for your spouses, for your kids. We got summer season is here. It's gonna be busy. Keep up with yourselves, stay hydrated. I'll see y'all later.